Hello, everyone, and thanks for joining us today. This webinar is part of our Wellness Wednesday webinar series and is brought to you by Action for Healthy Kids. Today's webinar focuses on how to host a health and wellness fair at your school. My name is Heidi Milby, and I'm a school program manager with Action for Healthy Kids. Um, I'm really excited to be here with you all and to talk with you a little bit about how to host a health fair in your own school. Let's review some logistics before we get started. Once you're linked in, you'll see a control panel, usually on the right-hand side of your screen. You can use either your telephone or your speakers to listen to the presentation, but everyone will be muted to avoid static and background interference. There is a dialog box at the bottom of your control panel. You can type in questions within this dialog box as we're going along, and we'll do our best to get them answered later in the presentation or via email following the webinar. This webinar is being recorded and links to the recording, the handouts, and other information will be sent to you within two to three business days after the webinar. So let's go ahead and get started. First, I do want to give you a little bit of background about Action for Healthy Kids. So Action for Healthy Kids fights childhood obesity, undernourishment, and physical inactivity by helping schools become healthier places. Ultimately, our goal, of course, is to make sure that kids are healthy. Our network is made up of moms, dads, teachers, school wellness experts, school and community leaders, you name it, anyone who has banded together to create healthier learning environments for our children. And ultimately, we believe that everyone has a part to play in ending the nation's childhood obesity epidemic, and we believe that some of our programs, tools, and resources help make that possible. So we were founded in 2002 by former Surgeon General David Thatcher, and today we have more than 90,000 members all across the country. We also partner with dozens of professional associations, government agencies, and corporations at the, at the national, the state, and the local level as well. So at Action for Healthy Kids, we help our members and supporters learn about issues, take action in their schools, and work to ultimately transform their school cultures. So our goals for today's webinar focus on just that, learning, acting, and ultimately transforming your local school. So first, it's our goal that you walk away with an understanding of what health and wellness fairs can look like at school. We'll also share some information on various approaches to hosting a health and wellness fair at your local school and how health and wellness fairs fit into your overall school wellness program. Second, it's also our goal that you gather some ideas and strategies on how you can take action in your school. So we'll talk through hosting a health and wellness fair step by step so you feel equipped, you feel like you have a guide to plan a successful one on your own. And then finally, it's our goal that you use this information that you learned today, and by acting upon it, ultimately you'll transform your school culture for the long term by integrating healthy school-wide events such as health and wellness fairs to ensure that every single kid in your school is healthy and ready to learn. So let's go ahead and dive in. Let's first talk about the why. So why might you want to host a health and wellness fair at your school? So first, health and wellness fairs are a great way to show your school and your school community that you care about the health and well-being of staff, families, and the community. Health and wellness fairs are a public demonstration to the school community that health and wellness is valued by your school. Second, health fairs also provide an opportunity to educate families about health and wellness resources in your local community. As we all too well know, families don't always know where to access those health-related resources, or they may not be aware of a particular program that's available in your community. So health fairs can address this, and they can further help to ensure that your students and their families are healthy and ready to learn. And then finally, health fairs reinforce healthy eating and physical activity behaviors at home. They're an opportunity to make the school-to-home connection and to engage parents in your school's wellness efforts. As you can see on the screen, parents are critical to the success of school wellness efforts, so health and wellness fairs are a great way to either bring them in or continue to engage them as part of your programming. Additionally, health fairs provide an opportunity to engage students, staff, families, and the local community in health and wellness. Engaging these key groups of folks is critical to the sustainability and to the success of school wellness initiatives. They also provide health and wellness resources to families all in one place. So health fairs can really serve as that one-stop shop for wellness resources. And then they provide an opportunity for your local school to network with local health-related organizations that may be able to provide ongoing programming outside of just a one-time event um, to students or to families, um, again, even outside of that health fair. So for example, there might be the local health department that can come and host a table at your health fair, but then they're able to uh, provide ongoing parent presentations or an ongoing program to your school community. 
Health and Wellness Fairs ultimately are a great way to celebrate health and wellness, and they can even showcase some of your school wellness activities. So for example, the school dance team could perform during the Zumba, or during the fair, or the Zumba club could provide a 10-minute Zumba routine for attendees. This is an opportunity where you can really get creative, and, and don't be afraid to, to show off all the great things you've done around school wellness. So there is no one-size-fits-all strategy to planning a health and wellness fair at your school. Fairs do look a bit different in every school. Sometimes they're called health and wellness fairs, sometimes they're called health fairs, sometimes they're called um, fitness, fitness fairs. There's really a, a variety of different ways you can host one at your school. And there's a number of factors, such as the amount of space available at your school. So sometimes health fairs can take place in one area, like the gym or the cafeteria, or other times they may take place in several classrooms or even the hallway. It also depends on the number of people that you have that are available to coordinate and to supervise. So of course, the more people power you have, the bigger you can make your fair. It also depends on whether or not your school has done a health fair before. It's OK if your health fair starts off small with just a few organizations, but then grows if it becomes an annual event. In our experience, working with schools that have never hosted a health fair before, oftentimes they combine it with another activity, such as uh, a math night or if if your school requires parents to come in and pick up their progress report cards, having a few tables to have a mini health fair is an effective way of starting out. Additionally, what happens at health fairs looks different at every school. So some schools do incorporate something like a taste test where participants can try fresh vegetables or smoothies or healthier versions of popular snacks. These taste tests can be conducted by local chefs, by students, by volunteers. Again, it varies. Fairs can also include fitness stations, where participants spend a certain amount of time in each station, and they rotate, rotate at the sound of a buzzer. So if you do um, decide to do stations or have a station model without having participants formally rotate, you could develop something like a passport, where participants get a stamp or a sticker at every station where they attend. And then finally, of course, there's the traditional health fair that many of us are probably familiar with that consists of tables or booths with local organizations to provide information or services such as blood pressure screening or even interactive activities. So I think it's important for, for you to figure out do you want a combination of these or is there one particular type of health fair that works well for your school? So let's get into the details a bit. Over the next several slides, I'll take you through hosting a health and wellness fair step by step. And before I begin, I do want to note that these are general steps. It may look a bit different for your school. However, these steps are generally good guidelines to follow, especially if you're hosting up your first health fair and you're looking for some, some guidelines and support. So here at Action for Healthy Kids, we've compiled this list of 10 steps to help you host this fair at your school. So first, we recommend securing approval from your school administration. This may seem like a no-brainer, but it is an important step that's not worth overlooking. So make sure your administration supports you and determine how involved they want to be in the process. For example, do they want to approve all of the vendors or organizations that you invite? Do they want to participate on the planning committee? Uh, at a minimum, make sure that they are supportive of the date and the time that you choose, and that they're partners in helping you promote the event among staff, students, and families. If your school administrator is on board, they can really facilitate that staff buy-in, which can be uh, such an important component of getting folks to your fair. So once you've received approval, gather a team of diverse stakeholders and host a planning meeting. Ideally, your school has a wellness team or a health team that can take on the planning of a health fair. But if not, make sure you have at least parents, school staff representatives, administrators, even students on your team to make sure the fair meets everyone's needs and expectations. If you do have community partners already, having them involved on the team is also helpful. And then during that first meeting, make sure you schedule future meetings help you stay on track in your planning efforts. Third, determine your date, time, and location. Get it approved by your administration and get it on the calendar. I want to emphasize this point because it happens all too often where the date is planned, time is planned, and if it doesn't get on the school calendar, it gets overlooked. It may even be helpful to send a flyer home to all staff and parents asking them to save the date, even as you're finalizing additional details. And as we'll talk about later on, promotion is the key to having a successful event. Um, so the more you promote it, of course, the better participation you'll have. So consider sending home those backpack notifications, posting flyers around your school building, posting a notification in the newsletter on the school website or on social media channels. Additionally, 
engage other groups uh, at the school, such as the PTA or PTO or fundraising group in your promotion efforts. School staff members, as I mentioned before, are critical partners in promotion as well. So consider engaging them to incentivize students and families to attend. So for example, perhaps teachers could reward students with a, a late homework pass or extra credit points if they attend the fair and write up a brief summary of what they learned. One quick thing I do want to note about location is that your health fair doesn't necessarily have to be hosted at your school. So if you run into roadblocks with your location, consider reaching out to nearby schools or community organizations or even your park district to host your health fair there. And as you figure out the date and time and location, also set a few goals. So for example, what do you want participants to get out of the fair? Are you really looking to share resources? Or are you looking to expose them to different uh, varieties of, of fresh fruits and vegetables, vegetables and healthy snacks? How many organizations do you want to attend? Do you want 5, 10, 15, or more? How many parents, how many students uh, do you want as your goal to attend? Setting these goals you know, can help you really kind of track your progress and, and, get, and help keep you motivated throughout the process to make sure that you get all the folks there that you want to have there. Fourth, determine your budget. So do you have money to spend at all? Do you need money to spend? Thanks to the generosity of communities, it's not uncommon to be able to host a health and wellness fair without spending money. So even if you don't have money to spend, try not to be discouraged. Instead, make a list of the things you would like to have, for example, taste testing or raffle prizes for participants, and brainstorm organizations or opportunities to have those items donated. So in other words, budget doesn't necessarily just refer to money. Rather, it encompasses in-kind donations as well. And then fifth, consider picking a theme. So for example, is it everywhere and you want to promote heart health? Or are you a physical educator and you're focused on physical activity and you, you want to feature different physical activity resources in the community? Or perhaps you simply just want to say, hey, we want our kids healthy. We want to promote every kid healthy. Regardless of what theme you choose, having a theme can help guide you in selecting organizations, choosing participant incentives, such as raffle prizes, and it helps you narrow down your offerings. So the sixth step to conduct is to connect outreach to community organizations. So those first five steps we just reviewed have focused primarily on determining the logistics of what you'll need to share uh, with the event in order to recruit community organizations. So a little bit later on in the webinar, we'll talk a little bit about the community organizations you may want to consider. But for now, make a note to brainstorm a list of community organizations during one of your planning meetings. Consider reaching out to your district to see if they know of organizations that regularly participate in health fairs. So for example, your district might have a health and wellness office or a family and community engagement office that could be a great resource for you. You can also reach out to organizations in a way that makes sense to you. So some schools prefer just email or others prefer a written letter. Some prefer a phone call or others prefer to actually go door to door. It really doesn't matter. Uh, regardless, um, when, when you reach out to organizations, make sure at some point you provide written documentation that highlights the date of the event the time, which includes both setup time and the actual hours of the fair, location, general guidelines, such as we will provide your organization with a table and two chairs, unless requested otherwise, and remind organizations to let you know if they need access to the internet or electricity so that you can make plans to provide the needed, those needed services, or let them know if they're not available. And finally, a, a note to take special care of organizations. So make sure that they have a day of contact that they can go to with questions. Sometimes it's nice to even provide organization attendees with a bottle of water as a token of thanks. Seventh, in addition to community organizations, determine if you want to have a healthy eating component or physical activity station. So do you want to host a taste test or do you want to invite a yoga instructor to do a quick yoga routine? Some of these activities are, are more involved than simply asking organizations to come and host booth, so they do require some thought and consideration. Eight, re recruit volunteers. So we're going to talk a little bit more about volunteers later in the webinar, but for now I do want to just simply mention that try not to underestimate the power of volunteers. I think sometimes um, it's difficult to figure out how to engage volunteers. Who would I ask? Would they even show up? But they can be crucial in helping set up, take down your, your health fair, to conduct registration, even help you reach out to potential organizations in the beginning part of your planning. People power is truly powerful. Ninth, host your fair. Make it fun. Make it memorable. One thing we do recommend is having a sign-in sheet so you can track how many people attend. 
it's really important, especially if you, you needed to really convince your administrators that this was something that your school should do. Having the number of people attending is a great, uh, just very easy data point that you can share with them to show them how successful it was. And finally, give thanks and celebrate your success. Write a personalized thank you note to each organization and volunteer to express your thanks. And share your successes with your administrators, with your parents, and with others who helped you along the way so they know how you did. As I mentioned, consider sharing the number of participants, or maybe even ask participants to fill out a short evaluation survey to win a raffle prize. So you'll have some data to share. These types of acts will help to foster these relationships, and they can be beneficial if you decide you want to host a health fair in the future. Now that we've talked about steps a little bit, let's talk about a timeline. Timelines do vary. The more time you have to plan, of course, the better off you'll be and the more support you should be able to get. However, at a minimum, we do recommend that you secure potential organizations at least two months prior to your fair. We've heard this a lot from our community partners that two months seems to be about the right time where they, they need that, that time so that they can do their own planning. So that gives you enough time, of course, to secure your organizations, promote your event, finalize your logistics without feeling rushed. We also recommend that three to four weeks before your health fair, you really begin to promote it. You'll, of course, want to ramp up your promotion efforts the week before the event, so make sure that people know about it at least a month ahead of time. And then finally, I've already mentioned giving thanks, but it's so important that I'm going to mention it again. Give thanks. Make sure within a week or, or a few, few days after your health fair that you send thank you notes to all of the volunteers and organizations. Let's talk about the types of organizations you can consider inviting. So first, local pharmacies. So oftentimes a pharmacist or a farm tech might be able to attend a fair to talk about health issues or Medicaid or answer other drug or insurance related questions. Some pharmacies also will provide flu shots at health fairs, so that's another great option. Contact local fitness vendors. So for example, you can contact large vendors such as a sports authority or Dick's or one of the, the larger stores or small sporting goods stores, so maybe something that's local to your community. See if they'd be willing to either appear at a booth displaying some of their latest products, um, or alternatively, alternatively, they may consider donating a gift card or a piece of equipment for a raffle prize. On a related note, of course, contact local fitness centers, as they may be willing to display information about memberships or services or programs, or some may even offer to perform a fitness demonstration. So for example, consider asking your local YMCA or other fitness centers, such as Planet Fitness or 24-Hour Fitness, or even uh, yoga or Pilates studios. So get creative and, and reach out to those local fitness centers. Occupational health clinics are also great for displaying information about services, programs, and information, specifically around avoiding injury. For in, injury. Um, they may also be available to provide stretching demonstrations as well, which is a nice feature. Your local fire and police departments are great partners to provide information about safety. Some will also demonstrate car seat safety, so if you have a lot of young families that are attending. And then does your community know have a well-known food truck? If so, and that food truck, of course, is a healthy option, consider asking them to park out in front of your school and either provide healthy taste tests or maybe just be present for families to purchase a meal before or after the health fair. In addition, contact your local hospital for screenings and information. Depending on your local hospital, you may want to outreach to the health pr promotions department, the food and nutrition department, or even the marketing or community outreach department. This really varies based on uh, your local hospital, but those are three typical departments that might be able to support you. Contact your local dairy council. So the dairy council may provide nutrition education resources, especially calcium related um, information and informative duplicating masters. So in other words, things that, that you can share with participants, tip sheets. Does your city or town have a local chapter of uh, local association. So for example, American Heart Association or the American Lung Association, American Diabetes Association. I recommend doing an inventory of local associations in one of your planning meetings or as a homework assignment and reach out to see if they could perform health screenings or provide wellness information. There is also an American Massage Therapy Association. So if you go to their website, you can search your zip code and then you can locate massage therapists that may be willing to come and do five-minute chair massages. Your county or state health department may also be another great community partner that could provide screenings or information. And finally, don't forget to contact local healthy food vendors. I know we mentioned food trucks earlier, but think about 
even large or small uh, health food stores. Um, so for example, Whole Foods or Trader Joe's or even Aldi, Kroger, Publix, Walmart, and other national grocery chains that may be willing to donate water or fruits and vegetables or even provide a store dietitian to come out and support their health care. Many of these grocery chains do have outreach dietitians who, who want to get out in the community and support these kinds of fairs. You can get creative. Other biz local businesses may want to get involved to promote their products or their services. Of course, I've meant, what I've mentioned a lot about is nutrition and physical activity related vendors, but of course, think about other aspects of health. So mental health, for example, might be a great resource to provide, or even something like if homelessness is, a, is an issue in your community, resources around homelessness. So, uh, feel free to get creative and invite you know, whomever you think would be interested in promoting their offerings to, to local families. A few tips for success. So these tips that I'm going to share with you were shared with us uh, by a school in Chicago, Illinois, Whittier Elementary School. So they hosted their first health fair a couple of years ago, and they learned a lot. So they um, approached us and shared some of their, their lessons learned. First, recruit parents before doing any, anything else. So as soon as the wellness team decided they wanted to host the health fair at Whittier, the wellness champion pitched the idea to the parent committee, and she was able to immediately secure three parent volunteers who served on the planning committee, and they also served as, as promotional avenues and as advocates for the health fair. So those parents went to other parents and invited them to attend. The second tip is to let students run the show. So students can be powerful advocates for health. Not only do they influence their peers, but they also have that power to influence their parents. So if you want parents and students to attend the health fair, enlist student help. At, at Whittier, they, they ended up selecting six trustworthy eighth graders that served as health fair ambassadors. So these eighth graders got t-shirts, the special role, and it was their job to pass out flyers prior to the event, to talk about the event in all classrooms. So two days before the health fair, they divided, went to all classrooms, announced the event, they also welcomed attendees when they arrived, and of course, they encouraged their own parents to attend. Third, provide food. I don't know if I need to say much more than that. We know that food brings people together. It's a great way to incentivize people to come to your fair. So sprinkle taste testing stations throughout your fair with healthy and easy snacks for participants. So at, at this particular fair at Whittier, they had three or four different taste testing stations that were every, every three to four tables, they had a taste testing station. So as people were walking through the fair, they were rewarded with food every so often. Really successful strategy for them. Fourth, be strategic about the date and time. So if you want parents to attend, consider scheduling the event for right after school until early evening. So parents who pick up their children when the bell rings can attend at the beginning, and then parents who work can perhaps participate towards the end. The way that Whittier scheduled theirs is they scheduled it during an after school program. And they worked with the after school program coordinators to ensure that all students from the after school program came to the health fair. And then they, they organized it during a time where when parents were picking up their children from the health fair, they were able to drop in to the, to the health fair um, as they were picking their kids up from their after school program. Keep it simple. It's easy to get bogged down with providing all of the extras like raffle prizes and other participate incentives, but think about what you really want. And if, if you feel confident and comfortable in providing some of those extras, great. But don't feel like it's something that you have to do. Six, be confident when recruiting local organizations to participate. But the hardest part is sometimes making that first phone call. So consider well, putting together an outline that includes basic details and talking points. And as part of that outline, be sure to highlight the benefit to the organization so that they'll very clearly know what's in it for them. And then seventh, I've already mentioned this, give thanks. So of course, send that personalized thank you note to everyone who participated in supporting the event um, to express that gratitude and sustain their support for future years. So we mentioned earlier, volunteers bring a lot of value to the table. There's a number of advantages to engaging volunteers. I'll mention just a few of them. One is they may have specialized knowledge or skills that could be useful. So for example, local dietitians are effective nutrition educators, and local chefs can teach families how to cook healthy at home. They also bring a new and different perspective, and they can bring fresh energy. So for example, partnering with a local university or college to bring in students may give you the energy boost that you need to make it a super exciting health fair. 
We also provide a lasting impact and contribution. The more people that you get involved, the easier it is to, be, to gain additional support for your work. And then finally, they save money, and they can do a lot of good work for little to no cost. So that's definitely a plus. And because of this enormous amount of help that's potentially available from volunteers, an important question to ask is, how can we best tap into this resource? So volunteers typically have a motivation for getting involved. It varies based on each volunteer, but keep these motivations in mind when you're recruiting for volunteers. So first, people volunteer because it meets their personal needs. They want to share their skills or knowledge, or maybe they want to gain, to gain additional professional experience. People also volunteer because of a friendship or a social aspect. So when one person is involved, consider asking them to bring along a friend next time to volunteer. And the last motivation is the strongest level of commitment, and it's that people volunteer because they have a passion for the cause, organization, and the work being done. So it's important to keep all of these factors in mind when you're looking to involve, involve volunteers or to strengthen your current volunteer engagement. So think about who in your school's network has skills or interests that complement your needs. Do you already partner with student teachers from a local university where maybe you could reach out and, and get folks from their health and wellness program to come and support your health fair, for example? Brainstorm some of those ways to engage volunteers, parents, or community members, or organizations, or businesses in one of your planning meetings so you can make sure that volunteers are a, a part of your health and wellness fair. Before we close, I do want to mention a couple of additional resources that could be useful in planning your fair. So first, Every Kid Healthy Week. So Every Kid Healthy Week is the last week of April. It's an annual observance that was created in order to celebrate school health and wellness achievements in schools. So it is recognized on the calendar of National Health, health Observances. And this year it takes place the week of April 25th through 29th. So contact your state Action for Healthy Kids state coordinator, or uh, we'll provide contact information at the end if you're interested in more information or more support in hosting your Every Kid Healthy Week event and using your health fair as part of that event. Also, check out our Parents for Healthy Kids program. So this is a program we have that's not just for parents. It's really for anyone working around school wellness. I mention it because there are free tip sheets in both English and Spanish that could be great resources for you to print off and hand out to health fair participants. And then finally, check out Action for Healthy Kids' Game On program. So Game On is Action for Healthy Kids' signature program. And many of the ideas from this webinar do come from the program. So Game On includes more than 70 fun and easy to implement activity ideas that focus on two categories, eating better, which of course focuses on healthy eating, and moving more, which focuses on physical activity. The way that these activities are organized is by room within the school building. So as you can see on your screen, it's a school blueprint. So for example, if you're a teacher that's looking for ways to engage your students in more physical activity in the classroom, you could go to the link for Game On, register, totally free to register, log in, click on the classroom, and you'll be offered a bunch of ideas for moving more in the classroom and for eating better in the classroom. And then many of these activities also provide ways to include all students, especially students with special needs, and also how to engage volunteers in that particular activity. So health, a health and wellness fair is one of the activities within Game On. There are also activities such as family fun days and fitness nights circuit stations, and taste testing. So really a, a variety of different activities that could provide additional resources and ideas for you as you implement your health and wellness there. Of course, we also continually offer resources on our social media pages. So I encourage you to check us out in whatever form of social media you, you are on. Our Pinterest page in particular does a lot of great tangible ideas for things that could support your health and wellness there or your other school wellness activities. And with that, I'm going to end the webinar today. So thanks to all of you for your particip participation. All of the materials and information will be sent in a follow-up email within two to three business days. Um, and I just want to wish you all good luck in planning our health fair. And please feel free to reach out to us using the email on your screen, gameon at actionforhealthykids.org. If you have questions or need additional support, and we'd be happy to help you be successful in hosting your health and wellness fair. Thanks, everyone, and have a great day.